Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here and welcome on into the first of a ton of videos about the upcoming Marvel Avengers Tower set 76269. This set is massive and it includes 31 figures, a ton of different stickers and references which we will go over in a separate video but today I wanted to sit down and talk about what and who is missing from this set. If you want to hop around to the different chapters down below, different topics, you can. I think there's actually quite a lot here to talk about and discuss and explain some things that you could hear from different designer interviews and such. So let's go ahead and let's jump into things. So I want to start with what I think the biggest thing is that people are saying is missing from the set and that is Grand Central Station and the MetLife building and what's great is Mark Stafford has actually gone on Reddit and explained this so I'm going to read you exactly what he said there's not much of the MetLife in the MCU just a few dozen octagonal floors between Avengers Tower and Grand Central did build a very early version with those and Grand Central it doubled the piece count and therefore the price and added another 50 centimeters to the height. I think it would have needed two boxes. Also, it turns out that Grand Central, or at least all the parts of it that makes it worth including, are trademarks of the New York Transit Authority or Port Authority. It's a bit confusing and would require a license. We decided it was best to keep the parts that are most iconic to the building in the MCU. And most people don't seem to be aware Avengers Tower comes out of the top of Grand Central slash the MetLife complex. I would have loved the street slash overpass area for the group splash shot from the Avengers movie to be in here though. But I guess now that's a job for mocking. I'd love a diorama set of that personally now that we've got everyone. But anyways, he goes on to say... So originally the base was bigger with an extra 16 by 32 base plate. So it would have been 48 by 32 deep. The station was tan and at the front with a plan to have one wall smashed. So the Leviathan could lay there like in the Avengers movie, though I built it intact for the sketch. At the back was an accurate version of the lobby as seen in Endgame, actually a building in Toronto, and I squeezed the shawarma place in the back corner. The reason for three small interiors was to introduce a strong central wall to carry the weight of what was on top. Directly on top there, there was an octagonal floor, empty as I couldn't think what to put in there, representing the MetLife building and the main tower on top of that was essentially the sketch model Justin and Marcos Besa built around the time of Age of Ultron came out. That part is maybe 10% smaller than the final tower. It was cool, but like I say, it was stupidly big and I don't think anyone is ready for a $1,000 set. Which is 100% true, by the way. Like, everyone's already upset about the price for this. So imagine it being double the price. That sounds like a really cool concept, but again, he's right. I don't think people would pay that price for all of that. I just want to say this up at the top why some people are here. This is the reasoning behind it. First of all, Wasp is here because she was a part of the original roster that's actually referenced inside of this set, the first appearance of the Avengers. That was actually 60 years ago. So this is sort of a celebration to that, as well as when you look at everyone else with Vision, War Machine, Scarlet Witch, and Falcon, that's actually the team at the end of Avengers Age of Ultron. So I think that's quite fitting. The only person here that makes absolutely no sense at all is Wong, which we'll touch on as we go through. And when it comes to duplicate figures and different things, I know that a lot of people are like, oh, why is there a second Captain America? Well, when they include a duplicate figure of someone or even have figures come in from another set, which they use the term bleeding when talking about the bugle. So when the Quinjet came out, that allows all of those figures to bleed into the set versus if they chose to have everyone in their Age of Ultron outfits, we've only got Black Widow and Captain America. Everyone else would need new updates and prints. And a quote from the designer here from Reddit, Mark Stafford, he said that it was a choice between two caps and four Chitari, or one cap and five Chitari. I stand by our decision. I think he's absolutely right. I think that was just such an incredible moment from Endgame, and it also gives them content for inside of the tower, adding that catwalk, adding the broken glass and all that. I think that is a much better decision there that they went with. So it was never going to be 
anyone else that you're about to hear. So we're going to go in order here of who's missing from chronological order to the best of my abilities here. So number one, I think from the first Avengers movie, Phil Coulson needed to be in this set. It's been such a long time since we've gotten him. He was in this comic book set and I would just love to get an MCU version of him here, especially since, you know, we even have sort of the scene and the location from the Hello Carrier from spoilers. His death would have been really cool to get like that destroyer gun or whatever for him as an accessory. Again, this is a celebration of the Infinity Saga. He, of course, came and recruited Tony for the events of the Avengers movie the first person that they are avenging for i think it's really important if you look at all these different levels of uh, why he should be here he definitely is missed next up here speaking of shield maria hill is just another one that i'm so disappointed isn't here they literally have a reception desk here and she may not have necessarily been the receptionist she was still working at the tower so it would have been perfect to put her behind that we, of course, see her applying for the job at the end of the Winter Soldier and then getting it and seeing her actually working in Age of Ultron. I think it's just so sad that she's not there to brief the team when they come back from the different missions and things like that, and she isn't here. Speaking of Vital to the Tower, the Iron Legion is just, just beyond, I think, one of the biggest missed opportunities here because with them, it would be easy to print and create these pieces and reuse them here multiple times in the set probably giving us another two like we got back in the day with the original tower and i just think that having people to fight from age of ultron is also very important not just having the ultron mark one but having this fully fixed version i think that he's controlling i think would have been very important to have here for them to fight up at the top of the tower or just you know have them peacekeeping and doing different things maybe you know fending off the chitari pretending these different storylines exist as this set does right i think they definitely should have been here would have been cool if they even had some sort of feature to fly through the a if it was big enough i know that that probably would mean enlarging that but that's also just so iconic that's the first time you see the tower is them flying in so i'm very sad about that Bruce Banner, whether they just take the Infinity Saga one from the Hulkbuster, just throw it in here, I think that would have worked well. But the fact that you can't have everyone up at the top doing the party scene, trying to lift up Thor's hammer, is very frustrating. It would have been so cool to have the one with the green angry eyes and the, sam the sort of gamma radiation veins and all that trying to lift the hammer. I'm sad he's not here. I will also would have loved just a lab coat version of him from that movie. I've been waiting for one with purple pants for just such a long time. So hopefully at some point, if they do some more Age of Ultron stuff, we get him and maybe even... I don't really need them, but their civilian outfits would have been really cool to get in this uh, set as well, besides Tony. Quicksilver is beyond missed here. I know that a lot of people are like, why do you want Quicksilver? I've said this before, and a lot of people forget that he was there. They have a fight in the tower with Scarlet Witch. He is there for the birth of Vision. And then they fly from there to Sokovia to fight Ultron. He's there. He gets his suit from there. It's just like we have that team. We almost complete and they didn't put him here. And then, of course, they could have used him in future sets down the line as well, repurposing him. So he's such a huge missed opportunity. Spider-Man is another one. This technically isn't canon, but again, they're putting people like Wong and other other characters that never actually step foot in the tower in the set. So he does appear on the side of the tower in some of the marketing for Homecoming. So it would have been perfect to get him in this set and that figure from the Sanctum. It wouldn't devalue that since this is a more expensive set. So why not just throw him in here? I think would have been really fun. And Happy Hogan is another one, just because he is that Stark Industries employee. He's been with Tony for so long. You know, he's his forehead of security, right? So I think that it would have been great to get him and getting an updated figure because he so badly needs one. Like, the figure we have right now is just not it. So I'd love an update for him, one that actually looks like him. And, of course, just because he actually did spend time in the tower. We saw that from homecoming i think that having like a crate full of different artifacts and things would have been really cool to get uh representing homecoming because that's one of the only other times that we actually see the avengers tower so it's sad 
that that wasn't included. And now, skipping ahead, but also going backwards in time, Rumelo, Crossbones, as well as Sitwell kind of would have been cool to get, I think, in this set. I, f I feel like they're kind of missed just in general. Maybe if we get like a Helicarrier or something, they could appear there. Next up, we're moving into characters who'd never actually stepped foot in the tower, but would have been great to get. So, more civilians. Specifically, one that pops into my mind is the Waitress, played by Ashley Johnson. The fact that the Bugle just had so many civilians, I think it would have been so cool to get some other types of characters here in this set. Ultron could have and should have been in here. He's referenced a couple times here, and I think that's such a shame that a regular version of Ultron isn't here. I'm curious to see how they're going to handle that again. I assume we're going to get more Infinity Saga, Age of Ultron stuff, so I look forward to seeing if they bring back that piece because it is, again, referenced in this set. You know, even some Ultron sentries could have been used here and then maybe taking one of the heads and using it in a crate for Happy I think would have been cool too. But, of course, the most iconic and important one is included in the set. The Ancient One is such a missed opportunity here. Not only because if you put her in here... She could have been in like an Infinity Saga set. She should have been in the Sanctum last year. But the fact that she actually fought in the Battle of New York and it would have been a perfect tie-in for Endgame and the time travel and everything. It's so frustrating that she's not here, that they chose Wong instead. I really just don't get that. Doctor Strange is another one. Again, I feel like over Wong would have been cool. Again, they could have done an Infinity Saga outfit for him, not the Multiverse of Madness one. And then again, repurposing that in other sets down the line. This ties into an idea that I had for a promo. The Department of Damage Control would have been cool to get in the set, cleaning up the Battle of New York. And as the promo, instead of this weird modern taxi without riders and black panther it would have been cool if instead it's one of those trucks and it's adrian tombs whether he is in his full vulture gear or it's also with spider-man and that he's got this truck full of stuff inside maybe happy's in this set too i don't know that would have been cool to have this sort of homecoming set that connects to the avengers tower and stark tower would have been really awesome so I think the biggest missed figure, though, that people are saying is Stan Lee. And the reason they're saying that is because Kevin Feige was included in this. And if you listen to some of the interviews and the process of this, it was we always wanted to include Kevin, the Avengers fan, to sort of honor Kevin Feige and everything that he did for the MCU and the Infinity Saga. And they were never going to call him Kevin Feige. It wasn't until very recently that they got the green light to actually call him that. So he was just going to be in the set with his little Avengers hat and resemble him, but never officially Kevin Feige. So licensing out someone much more iconic and recognizable as Stan Lee, as maybe Stan the Avengers fan, I don't think that would have gone over well in terms of you know the rights to his estate and different things like that so there's something going on there again i really think he just should have been in the bugle not necessarily this set but he does actually appear in avengers tower and uh, of course at the end of the avengers as well sort of like the waitress has some of those lines and moments at the end of that film i think it would have been really cool to have him here Last time with the Bugle, Mark Stafford made a long list of, I think it was 60 characters that he wanted to appear in the Bugle, and he shared a couple of characters that he would have liked to include in the set. Uh, they were all going to be comic book characters who were Avengers icons, so Circe from The Eternals, Wolverine, the Fantastic Four have been members, as well as She-Hulk are all a bunch of different characters that he wanted in the set. Captain Marvel... I, didn't, I don't want her, but she was considered to actually be in the set along with Spider-Man. They were the two that they almost included. Moving on now to what's missing, not who. Small little things I'll start with. A sticker on the briefcase. I feel like that briefcase is iconic with those lines and different things. And we've seen them in Marvel do stickers on briefcases. So I think that would have been kind of cool to see them do that. Some other nitpicky things. There's no stud on Loki's staff for some reason. Meanwhile, transparent light blue studs are included so i don't know why that wasn't here they've done that before in other sets moving on now to leg printing and dual molded legs if you didn't know every single theme has a budget for the year every single set has a budget in terms of how many prints 
how many stickers, how many recolored pieces they can use, how many new pieces they can create, all of these different things. And this set has a lot. They introduce three brand new pieces in the set. Four, if you actually include the superhero posing piece that was created for this set, not the sets that we got in the summer that have already used them in other subsequent themes that was designed for this set. There's also a total of 21 new prints here in the set with multiple recolors throughout the sets. There's a couple other elements as well, like Vision's cape and Wasp's wings. Those are new things as well that add to the budget. So there's so much already going on here in the set. Yeah, dual molding. There are actually characters like, for example, Captain America. There's dark blue legs with dark red boots that exist. So just putting that in here, I think, would have added so much to the figures. And I'm just sad that... You know, dual molding, I feel like, is something that should be easier because anyone else, other themes can use that versus an exclusive leg print or something. I get that. A couple other builds that I think would have been really cool to see in the set would have been a brick built, like, briefcase for the staff. Just having that laying up on the sort of catwalk where uh, Captain America fights himself, I think, would have been really awesome just because of, Again, going back to Romulo and Sitwell when they go into the elevator and he walks out so smug and, and proud of himself with the Hail Hydra thing. I feel like that's just such a cool looking briefcase with that there. Would have been awesome to get. And then we've also got Ultron's Cradle. Now, while we have that bed that sort of doubles as the medical bay for Hawkeye as well as where Vision's being born... I still think that it would have been cool to have something sort of to enclose him. Maybe you could swap that out. Again, it's a bit tight in there, but I think that would have been cool to get. One of the biggest missed opportunities, in my opinion, is not having up above on the landing platform the yellow arms where Tony removes his suit. I feel like just the line of, I'm not in. I'm actually out. Like, all of, like introducing us to Stark Tower that way and having him fly on in and walk on in is just so, so cool. And then, of course, later on with Loki as well. So my idea for that would have been to have the platform and it could attach to the Quinjet and you could sort of move it out. So either it's about to leave or it's landing or something, or you could also attach it and have it so that Tony can actually move forward. And then it would, like the arms on the side would slide forward, too. I don't know if I'm explaining that properly, but I think that would have been cool. And speaking of that Quinjet, I just think that it should have been the Avengers Quinjet and not the S.H.I.E.L.D. one. I feel like we've gotten S.H.I.E.L.D. ones so many times in the past. We just had, of course, the one in January, and that actually had swappable stickers. This one doesn't, which doesn't really make sense anyways. But because the aesthetic of the set is based off of Avengers Tower. I kind of wish that the Quinjet matched that. That's just my personal opinion, but maybe you're happy with the Quinjet being based off of S.H.I.E.L.D. But that's it. That's everything that I think is missing from this set. Do you have any opinions, thoughts, characters that I missed out off this list? What do you think is the most important that they should have included here in the set? I'd love to hear your thoughts, your comments down below. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos on the Avengers Tower. Believe me, there is so much coming out soon here on the channel, including that very long review that you will see here very, very soon. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Hope you all have a great day. I will see you all in the next one.